So, hello everyone. Um, we have now the second talk in the science meet, Froscon meet science track, and I may introduce to you uh, Jens Pelzetter from the University of Bremen, right? And yeah. uh, he's right now doing his PhD, and the topic he is talking today is part of his of his PhD, and he talks about semi-automatic approach for testing the accessibility of web pages. Surely an important issue, nevertheless, maybe one issue not on the top list of the developers. So, it's your stage. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, long title, um, but it describes the, um, the thing I want to talk about it's best. Um, first, some Mm, words about accessibility about um, of web pages that most people think about blind people if they hear this topic um, that's not the truth or the complete truth um, blind people are only one part of accessibility an important part nevertheless but that um, there are many more impairments which can affect the way you can use web pages. Um, one example, um, about 8% of the male population can't see red and green as colors. So that's uh, not too small amount of people. And what are accessible web pages? Um, there are a few standards in this. The most important one are the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which are available in the version 2.1 since last year. They are organized into four principles, um, perceivable, operable, operable and uh, understandable, and robust. Um, which then are, are split into 13 guidelines and 80, uh, 78 success criteria, which describe if, where the various um, requirements for accessible web pages. There are also some supplemental documents um, understanding the web content accessibility guidelines, which describes it's the intent of the success criteria in detail and the techniques for web content accessibility guidelines describes how you can implement them. Um, testing is not that easy, but I will come to that at, um, later. Um, there are a few other standards, um, for example, the authoring tool accessibility guidelines or the accessible rich internet application standards. That's, um, if you are interested in that, I will give a talk in C119 this afternoon about these standards where I will um, talk in detail about them. So if you are interested, it, it's at two o'clock this afternoon. Um, and testing and web page for accessibility is quite a quite complex task. Um, it requires manual work at the moment. Even there are some browser plugins which you can use to test some parts or some aspects of the accessibility, but not everything. Um, and it still requires very um, manual work and it's very time consuming. And the guidelines from the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines are also open for interpretation. And, um, the uh, W3C has um, recognized that and is currently developing a new standard, um, the accessibility, accessibility conformance testing rules, um, which defines a format um, for describing accessibility conformance testing rules. Um, and first, 
rules using the standards are available at a GitHub repository. Um, problem is that's still a textual description, so nothing which you can use um, for automatic tests. Um, they are, the intent is um, to provide a tool implementers a guideline for these things, but at the moment there are not very much tools which implement that. And the idea which I had is um, you should automate as much as possible if you test these and for the, the steps which require manual work, you should guide the, all, um, the users through these steps so that they can um, know exactly what to check for. And, and, and I developed as part of my PhD a tool which is structured like this. Um, first, there is a service which um, has an ontology with the rules and executes the test um, in using Selenium. I don't know if Selenium is, um, if you know Selenium, um, that's a tool which you can use for testing web user interfaces. It's often used um, to check if a user interface works correctly. And the service call, um, uses Selenium to do the, um, provides an user inter also web user interface is and the real testing is done by a, um, by multiple uh, instances of the of a bot which then executes the selenium tests and and tests the website it um, yeah uh, the web user interface looks at the moment like this. Um, it's all in, implemented in Java because the reason, um, the reason for that is that the uh, uh, APIs for using ontologies are only available in Java. So oh, um, the easy way was to do the rest also in Java. Um, if you want to evaluate a web page, you simply put the URL here, click start, and then the tool starts to run, analyzes the document, and, and executes all uh, tests it knows. Um, it first um, determines which um, rules are applicable for each element, and then executes the, for each element the applicable tests. And at the end, you get some, a screen like this, this um, where you see the tasks which require manual work. And if you then click on the button, you see a screenshot with the element and the question and simply click passed or failed and at the end, if when all tests are finished, you get an overview about the rules. For this page, many rules are not applicable. And here you see some rules which um, have passed or are failed. And that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, um, okay, a short, um, the description of these act rules looks like this. Um, a moment. Yeah. 
So, so here, this is, that's the description when this rule is applicable. You don't need to read this now. And in my tool, uh, the translation looks like this if you put that in pseudo code. But um, the rule has three um, conditions, which um, um, the element must match to, so that the rule is applicable. Uh, and in this case, um, it should be a button, should be exposed to the accessibility tree. Um, every browser um, builds uh, um, uh, additional a tree um, of the elements of a web page which is available for so-called assistive technologies, for example, screen readers. And not all elements are exposed to this tree. And yeah, and the, this element should not be an input element with the type image, which, um, yeah. And now, if we are lucky, yeah, it still runs. Um, before the talk, um, I started a evaluation of the Frostcon web page, which is still running. Um, that's also one problem which I'm currently working on. It takes very, at the moment, the testing takes very long because um, the problem is a web page has, a normal web page has many elements. A Frostcon web page has not so much, but um, for example, the start page of our university has about 2,000 HTML elements. And at the moment, it takes, the tool needs very long to test them all. But I think I will, I can cut this time um, so that it takes about half an hour for such a large page then to test. It's still a long time, but if you want to evaluate such a large page manually, you will, um, you will need longer because you have to look for each, for each element and that for each rule. So it, the tool will save you time. And yeah, uh, I think the tool also has some problem. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's so far. Um, yeah, that's the current status. I'm currently working on bug fixes and optimizations, and I'm looking for possible participants which want um, to evaluate this tool if it's finished. So if you are interested, please write me a mail, and I will get back to you when the tool is ready. Um, yeah. Then some other talks. I will give two other talks here on the FrostCon. One this afternoon in C119, which where I will talk about the standards for accessible web pages. Yes, and tomorrow I will give a talk where I will explain why accessible web pages are also useful for everybody, not only people with impairments. Yes, um, and some other advertisement, I'm also a member of the CMS Garden, which has also a boot here. And we have our own unconference in November. So if you want to meet us and learn about web content management systems, you can come to Essen. 
attendance is free as here. Yeah. Okay, questions. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, scan the cover web page here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you started the. Okay. Uh, it, it's you started the a scan from a web page. Is yeah. there also the possibility to start it from command line? Because that no. would enable. Not yet. Okay. Um, maybe I will work on that. Um, what you will can do is um, to use um, a browser extension, so you can start it directly from the browser. Uh, but that um, extension is still in development. Mm -hmm. the, the reason I'm asking is if you could integrate this into your uh, CI pipeline, yeah. that would be much more pleasant because you don't have to wait you know, half an hour or however long it takes on your local computer, but you can just yeah. push to the server, have it build it, and um, some, at some point you get You feedback. can leave this web page. It's not necessary to leave it open. Uh, yeah, but it still has to be running on my local computer. No, I can't no, 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 it's a web service. It will uh, run on a server. Or, or on a server. Um, but uh, if, if I have that one instance of the page yeah. that uh, I want to test, and locally, I want to continue development. Hmm? It's much easier if yeah, yeah. I have multiple versions. Yeah. No, no, that's a second step, hmm. uh, the integration in CI pipelines. OK. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> my question is, uh, in which different output formats can you get the, the, uh, the report? At the moment, own, um, the question was um, in which output Okay. Um, at the moment, you can only get an output uh, for humans. Um, when the tool is finished, as there is a standard for accessibility evaluation reports in a JSON format, that, um, which um, you will you can get the report then as export. So, as JSON, maybe. Other formats also, but the, the EARL standard will be implemented. Jason would be quite, quite fine, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah thanks. Um, what experience did you already um, get with this tool? So have you run it uh, yourself on various websites or have yeah, you um, had many other projects that tried it? and? Yeah. Um, so far, the results um, were that many web pages have some accessibility problems, sometimes in parts which you don't expect. Um, for example, one of the rules is that every element must have an accessible name, which is exposed to this ex uh, assistive technologies, and not much web pages have that. For all necessary, for all elements where it, it's necessary, it's not only um, alt um, text for images, but also label um, real labels for ba um, input elements. Um, I've seen many examples where you have a visible um, visual label for an input element, but it's not connected with the input it in a way which can be recognized by assistive technology. Yeah, my, my question would be whether you have to specify like each page on your website. Uh, like um, at the moment, point. yes, that's also one of the next steps to automate the scan okay. for a whole site. Um, at the moment, <laughs> I see. Okay, it's yet the second. It's now the second step. First, get it running for a single document, and then look into how you can do it for multiple pages. Okay, I have one more. Um, 
does it also work with, let's say, JavaScript intensive pages that um, have yes. only small yes, static um, parts and do a lot of rendering based on uh, information that comes back um, after some JavaScript calls? It should. Um, that's also one thing which has to be um, tested, um, how it works. Maybe you will have to define some interactions which the tool should do in the background. Um, I don't know if you know Selenium. Um, in the background, the bot starts a Firefox. Box, um, so JavaScript is supported it in this way, but um, maybe you will have to define some interactions with the page to get the complete rendering. And many JavaScript-based web user interfaces are really multiple pages, even if it's one page. So that's also one of the next steps if when the tool is running fine for normal static web pages. Any more questions? But uh, how is it with the uh, reliability of the tests? Do you uh, if um, you specify your rules, will it, will it get yeah, all the, the cases? Thankfully, the guy, um, the people which do the define these ACT rules, which I'm currently using as base, also define um, test cases for tools which implement them. So that should be easy to check. That's also one of the parts which I'm currently working on. As you maybe know, you find many problems when you start testing and when you are developing such um, novel tools. So sometimes you are, uh, are not as fast with the development as you want. And I hope um, to show um, to sh that I could show more today, but unfortunately there are some nasty bugs which I have to address in parts where I didn't expect them. <laughs> For example, this performance problem, which I didn't expect first when I planned the architecture of the tool. So that's one thing I have to address and which takes a lot time, a lot of time to find the reasons where the problem is exactly. Yeah. So one more question about the development of the tool. So it's yeah. part of your PhD project. So did yeah. you um, develop it all yourself or did yeah. you also consider um, what for instance I did in my PhD um, project like um, using students with bachelor master thesis to continue the development of the tool maybe it could free up some time for you I don't know yeah may maybe at the moment um, I'm working myself only myself on that tool and I'm quite certain that I will finish it in the next months. So, no, at the moment, no reason to involve other people. Hi, I would be interested how the report looks like if you have all. Do you have some categorizations like also that you can configure 
contrast level or descriptions availab availability not or reachability by keyboard? Yeah, not yet. Um, at the moment, it's only structured um, by the rules. So you get, for every rule, you get the output. Um, in later versions, you will be able to filter the results, for example, for the uh, VC AG conformance level or by other means. But for example, for contrast, the uh, web content accessibility guidelines give a very explicit um, measurement, which is necessary. So there's not much interpretation or much room for uh, definitions there. May I also ask a question? Yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> uh, I was surprised that you don't crawl the whole website, but you already need a half an hour for one page, even if it's a large page. But uh, yeah. anyhow, this uh, makes the problem quite complex to reduce the, uh, to, to increase the speed uh, yeah, of your um, analyze. I think um, one of the reasons why it takes so long is that the communication between the bot and the service is not efficient yet. Okay. And the saving of the results takes too long. But the problem is, um, if you, um, I already start um, multiple threads in the bot to do the evaluation. So, but you can start all your own threads in a Java web application. And so I had to split this. Um, and I think uh, I'm on a good way at the moment in the development to cut down the time the evaluation needs. And, and when that's, when I'm um, satisfied with the performance for one page, then I will do the things for the other side, um, for a whole site. Um, I don't think I will crawl the page re um, a site really. Here I think uh, you will define which pages you want to be evaluated because many sites have some typical pages um, they are built by templates, and if you, you, if you are the developer, you know more or less which pages are typical for your page, so that you don't have to evaluate every single page. You do the important ones, the complex ones, and leave out the smaller, you no, know, um, ones which are identical from their structure but only differ in their content. Okay, any more questions? No, I don't see. Here. So thank you very much for your yeah. talk. Thank uh, you. And uh, thank you for the audience. And then I think we can uh, close the session for the break and uh, see you in the afternoon. <laughs>